Hi everybody, welcome to this lecture on geometric distributions. This lecture is a part of a series of short lectures on applied statistics and today we'll study geometric distribution. It's a very important distribution in statistics and if not used carefully, it can even shock you and sometimes even embroil you in scandals. So we will see that example of how we could have been embroiled into this scandal but you know, by being careful statisticians and probability uh, practitioners, we managed to avoid it. So let's get going. Suppose a teacher thinks that only a fraction of his or her class will earn an A grade. And the teacher also thinks that that fraction is P. We can also call it the probability of getting an A. Now the teacher trials many student attempts. And at each trial K, where a trial really means marking an exam attempt, the probability of success, that is getting an A, remains the same, that is P. Now since probability is sum to 1, the probability of not getting an A equals 1 minus P. For brevity, let's call that Q. Now suppose the teacher wants to know what is the probability that an A will not be awarded until K trials? In other words, until the teacher has graded K exams. Now, obviously, the probability of waiting until different values of K varies. Hence, we say that K represents a value of a random variable, and let's call that random variable X. So the question really becomes, what is the probability that x equals k, that is, we get the first success at the kth trial? In other words, we award the first a <coughs> after we have evaluated the kth exam script. Now let's call getting an a a success and not getting an a a failure. Just for this presentation, folks, there's no need to get depressed if you didn't score an A in your last exam. So the probability that first A is graded at trial number one is P. Now, what's the probability at trial two? This equals probability that there is no success at trial one, but there is a success at trial two. Note, at each trial, we check for a success or a failure. Such a random trial is called a Bernoulli trial. Also note that trials produce independent events. That is, the outcome of one trial does not affect the outcome of, it, of any other trial. This is also why the probability P or Q does not change for any trial. Now in probability theory, when independent events occur, then the probability of them happening together is simply the product of their individual probabilities. Hence, P of X equals 2 equals probability of, of a failure times the probability of a success at the second trial. This equals QP. Similarly, the probability that x equals 3 equals the probability that first two trials produce failures, but the third trial produces a success. So p x equals 3 becomes equals to q times q times p, which equals q squared times p. So we can see a pattern emerging here. Thus, p x equals 4 equals q cubed times p. And so generally, the probability that x gets a value k equals q raised to the power of k minus 1 times p, such that k is a positive integer beginning at 1. Now, if you want to get your head around it or you want to see this general formula, how I arrived at it, you can pause this video here and go through the sequence of probabilities that we are getting, but it's really straightforward. Therefore, the probability distribution follows the probability mass function of 
q k raised to the power minus 1 times p where k equals 1 2 3 because we are calculating probabilities of different k and k is a discrete variable the probability distribution is also discrete which is why we call it a probability mass function here later on we shall talk about probability density functions when we will talk about uh, distributions of continuous random variables here note the assumptions behind this distribution uh, so the first assumption is that k is the number of Bernoulli trials and these Bernoulli trials must be independent of each other in other words one trial should not affect any other trial and secondly p is a uniform probability of success it doesn't change across trials note success marks the outcome that terminates your sequence of trials so in this case it is the award of an a at other times you may be tossing a coin and waiting for a head to appear so arrival of head marks the success in that case now notice the top of the slide says geometric distribution so why is that look at the sequence of probabilities that is p q times p q squared p q cubed p now this sequence is called a geometric sequence and geometric sequence in mathematics is defined as a sequence where each term equals the previous term times a fixed non-zero number so we can clearly see that happening here for example the second term qp equals p times q whereas the third time q squared p equals qp times q and so on so every successive term equals the last term times a fixed number and that fixed number in this case is q hence this probability distribution is also called a geometric probability distribution and we say that the random variable x follows a geometric distribution g with a parameter p where p is the probability of success geometric distribution has a single parameter p or probability of success in each individual Bernoulli trial this p remains constant for all the Bernoulli trials hence changing p changes the distribution therefore to show that a random variable x is geometrically distributed we also state its probability for example here we use p equals 0.8 but if we decrease p to 0.6, the probability distribution changes. Similarly, if we decrease it further to 0.4, the distribution changes again. Note we have used R software to draw these plots, and R treats k as the number of failures before a success arrives. Therefore, in these plots, k begins with 0 instead of 1, as we uh, as against what we said earlier and hence the success shows shows up in k plus one -th trial according to these plots you can find the r code for these plots in the description beneath this video now you must have noticed that the mode or the most likely outcome is zero in other words it is most likely to find a success after zero failures do you find that surprising does that mean that your best chance of getting an A is that the examiner must grade your paper first? Maybe the examiner is in the best mood in the start, but then starts getting tired and hence your grades suffer? Hmm. Before we dissect this scandal in education, also note that as P decreases from left to right, the probability of the mode decreases while the probability values for higher values of k increase for example k equals 4 is far likely likelier to occur at the p value of 0 0.4 than at higher values of probability p now this shouldn't really surprise us because the probability is sum to 1 so a decrease in one probability that is the probability of the mode must be compensated by an increase in the rest 
the geometric distribution models your desire your desire to see a number of failures before a success arrives okay. so it simply tells that if you want to see many failures before the first success arrives then these are the chances for example it models the chances of four failures before a success can arrive hence it models delayed success also the longer the delay the smaller are its chances this is also reflected in mathematical formulations if k equals 1 then the chances of success in the first trial are just p in the exam example suppose p is just 15 percent hence there are only 15 percent chances that first script graded will yield an A. However, as K increases, we multiply with, hover, with higher powers of Q. And since P and Q are both fractional values, that is, they are less than 1.0, higher powers of Q will yield increasingly smaller answers. So don't worry, you, don't want, you do not really need to put your script first on the examiner's table. Also note, that the chances of delaying success are small when P or the probability of success in any trial is high. This is reflected in the graphs on the last slide where probability diminishes faster with higher values of P. Skip back to the last slide to verify that if you want to. So another question you can ask is, on average, how many scripts an examiner will have to mark before he or she grades an A? The answer to that is the expected value. For a geometric distribution, the expected value is 1 over P, where P is the probability of success and K begins at 1. So if P equals 15%, then the expected value is 6.66 scripts. Now the next question is, will you definitely grade an A after approximately grading 7 scripts? Not really, because one must expect some deviation from the mean or the expected value. So the variance captures that deviation and the formula for that is given on this slide. However, note that variance is a squared quantity and we need to take its square root to bring it back, to bring it back into the original units of measurement. So if P equals 15%, then the standard deviation is 6.15. Hence, normally, you will mark anywhere in the range of 6.66 plus or minus 6.15 scripts to grade an A. You obviously can round those numbers off because, you know, there's no fractional uh, script. Now, sometimes we want to know the probability of delaying success at least until after K trials. For example, what is the probability that the first head does not appear during the first K trials, but can appear in any time later. So essentially, we want to know what is the probability of X being greater than K. And this is really equal to the sum of all the probabilities to the right side of K. But this is an infinite sequence of probabilities. So how do we calculate that? Well, we, we know that all probabilities sum to 1. So we can also compute the same by taking away all the remaining probabilities from 1. Now all the remaining probabilities are represented by probability of x being less than or equal to k. Now px less than or equal to k equals probability px equals 1 plus px equals 2, all the way to px equals k. Now, I shall require you to take a leap of faith here, and trust me that this sum of probabilities equals 1 minus q raised to the power of k. I shall put the proof at the end of the video for those who are interested in that. Anyhow, so finally, px is greater than k simplified, simplifies to just q raised to the power of k. This means 
that if, for example, you want to test what is the probability that for a fair coin, a head appears at least after the second trial, that is third trial or later, then the probability is 0 0.25. Notice in the last slide, we wanted to add probabilities up to a point k. As we were adding probabilities, we may say we were accumulating probabilities up to a point k or up to a value k. Now, if we want to define a function that accumulates probab probabilities all the way to infinity, we get what we call a cumulative distribution function or CDF. Therefore, the CDF of a geometrically distributed variable x is what we wrote at the top of the slide and repeat here on this bullet point, whereas the CDF itself appears in the right bottom of the slide. We can use pgeom function in R to plot the CDF of a geometric distribution. Since R follows the convention that K represents the number of failures before a success arrives, K begins at zero in this plot. Notice as K grows, the CDF or the cumulative, cumulative probability approaches the maximum value of 1.0. Finally, here is the proof for the mathematically inquisitive. I'd leave it for you to digest so pause the video and work through it. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I, I hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.